Hi, I'm Sarah Wonders and I'm a praise and worship leader and a singer songwriter. Thank you so much um, for coming back. Today I want to talk about New Age. It's a movement um, that's becoming more and more prominent in our society and actually of late I've been having a lot of encounters with people that have you know these particular beliefs and so I wanted to speak to you about it. So the movement if you like of New Age um, or seekers because they can also refer to themselves as seekers or some of them just refer to themselves as being spiritual. Their aim is to attain peace um, and they do this through not allowing their thoughts to become them and living in the now moment as opposed to thinking about the future. Another um, concept if you like of this new age belief system is that you have the spirit, you have the mind and you have the body. Sounds familiar right? I know. The reason why it sounds familiar is because obviously as you know um, for those who are followers of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Saviour, um, we know that we have a spirit, we have a soul and we live in a body, which is why we have some people that go with a label of being a Christian, but actually subscribe to uh, New Age uh, doctrine or practices. So you can see how it's very, very easy to not be able to uh, pick up on those that be, believe in the New Age movement, um, but it is something that we need to be aware of and alert to. Some indicators to allow you to know if you're speaking to someone um, who is of a, a New Age movement um, are things like karma, they believe in karma, um, they believe in something called my truth. So what that means is I can have a truth about something, you're free to have your truth about something. And what that actually means is that nobody um, conforms to one source of truth everyone kind of is not being held accountable basically. They also believe that there's more than one way to heaven and they kind of describe themselves as being spiritual. They believe in things like channeling, they follow star signs and astrology. And lastly, they don't acknowledge God, but they do say that there's a higher power. They tend to use uh, the term the universe. So those are the, some of the things that you can kind of use to indicate whether somebody is of this new age belief. And this list is by no means conclusive or exhaustive. I'm sure there are lots of other indicators as well. In terms of what this means for us as believers, and um, I guess what it really means um, for those people that follow this new age, is that this um, self-reliance to attain peace is, is, is almost setting yourself up as a God over your life. And I'm gonna read um, Galatians 5 verses 22 to 23, which says this. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Um, so the key points I wanna take away from that is that this peace um, uh, that is uh, uh, chased after um, by those that are spiritual and of the new age um, isn't something that you can kind of hold on to. It's, it's a piece of fruit of, of the relationship and the life that we live in Christ Jesus. Um, and the scripture to back that up, because obviously we always need to test everything we're saying by scripture, is found in John 16, verse 33, which says this. These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Hallelujah. This brings me on to my point, which really kind of stirred me up to do this video, uh, which is my recent experiences in coming across people uh, that kind of have this, you know, new age vibe going on. A phrase that I keep hearing over and over again um, is the phrase, let's put it in the universe. And that's normally used uh, maybe when you want to say something. So we call it speaking forth, um, you know, because we know uh, through faith that God created the world um, by the words that he spoke. So when they say let's put it in the universe um, That's a that's a that's a great indicator um, that they are of this kind of new age belief system or Just haven't like you know or just haven't met Christ or don't really know him or maybe they don't even understand What they're really saying the gravity of what they're saying um, It is important um, that we do not appear to subscribe to their thought patterns and subscribe to their beliefs. Um, a lot of the times we'll be in conversations and as a joke or as a passing comment, someone might say, okay, let's put it out into the universe. Um, and I must say, I, you know, I've been guilty of letting it slide as well, but actually um, more and more, this is kind of impressing on me and 
we're actually missing opportunities to evangelize and tell them and point them and direct them to the truth. Um, so my challenge to you is the next time someone makes a comment um, that refers to the new age, um, for example, put it out in the universe, I think that we should stop we should stop them and actually address address that statement. Um, is it gonna be awkward? Yeah. Is it gonna feel uncomfortable? Probably at first, but after a while, I'm sure that you will just ease straight into it and you'll be happy because you'll be spreading um, the love of Christ. We've got Romans 1 uh, verse 16 um, that we can use to encourage ourselves which says this. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes for the Jew first and also for the Greek. We must ensure that we do not bow, shrink back or blend in, you know, with these, um, with these sayings um, that we have people. We can't allow our language to kind of get muddled in because then we are not identifiable. As believers in Christ, we are called to stand out and we are set apart. We are called out from the multitude and as such, we don't speak like them. When we're, you know, addressing people of the new age uh, belief system and trying to point them to the truth, it shouldn't be combative. Everything that we're doing um, is in love um, because we care about their soul. If we don't start to address this, um, then what can happen is that we ourselves will slowly become more accepting of those things that challenge um, Christ Jesus and the will of God. Um, and before you know, we'll become numb and slowly become more dull ourselves. So I encourage all of us to ensure that our language reflects the kingdom because there is only one language and any other language that isn't kingdom um, is of the world. In closing, I just want to leave you with some Bible verses that we can use when we uh, come across people that are of this new age belief and I hope this helps. So for example, when someone talks about karma, if you do good, then you get good and if you don't do good, then you get bad. I want to point out Galatians 6, 7, which says this, do not be deceived. God is not mocked, for whatever a man sows, that will he also reap. So the reason why I want to, you know, read that Bible verse is just to basically say, let's not take God out of this. Um, this whole thing about karma excludes God. It excludes, it excludes the principles that he's already set up. Um, it's not karma just because what goes around comes around. Someone decided to make that up. You know, it's there because the creator of all of us, the creator of the universe, um, has made that a divine statue. The next thing that we hear people um, say a lot is, uh, I mean, you know, I mentioned earlier about my truth, their truth, or there's more than one way to heaven. John 14 verse six says this, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So, I mean, I don't need to kind of expand on that. It's very, very obvious. There is only one way um, to get to heaven and that is Jesus. He is the way. There is only one truth and that is the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, lastly, I would like to say that we are in a, a time of the smoky mirrors where things look like, or a person may look like they have the same belief system as you. Um, they may appear to be a Christian. Um, but actually they're not and so it's very very key uh, to have the Word of God in your back pocket to be able to just divide what we're saying and, and be able to ascertain and discern um, who is walking and you know living after the will of God and who um, are if you like living behind smoky mirrors where they appear to be um, of the faith of Jesus Christ um, but really are for this new world order and then that leads me finally onto um, the last scripture I'd like to share with you, which is called the mic drop scripture. And that's taken from 1 John chapter 4, verses 2 to 3. And it says this. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. And every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, of which you have heard that it is coming. And now it is already in the world. Told you mic drop right savor on that so I'm sure we've all been hearing you know Antichrist Antichrist popping up here and there and it kind of you know feel like oh I'm not even like I'm not I'm not interested in that or oh it's not here yet or all oh, your you know all these conspiracies but the Antichrist isn't gonna be some ugly scary beast um, it's already here and you've seen in the scripture that everything 
that does not um, confess that Jesus Christ is Lord is Antichrist. So let's not be dull, let's stay alert where we can, where we have opportunities, um, especially with those that are uh, referring to themselves as spiritual um, and are following the New World Order. Let's take this as an opportunity to evangelize onto them um, and, and save a soul. Let's, let's show the love of Christ by sharing the truth of this gospel. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, stay blessed.